Hey everyone, today we're doing another fun species spotlight, and with me today is Nez Pierce, our gray band king snake. These guys might be some of the best king snakes to keep in captivity, specifically if you're like a, uh, a new person just coming into there. This is going to be kind of like a first time or very intro beginning snake, and that's for a lot of different reasons. So the gray band king snake or the Lampropeltis alterna which that taxonomy has been all over the place for the last few years, but the Lampropeltis alterna, or we just call them alterna a lot here in the hobby, are gray banded king snakes. These guys are absolutely amazing little critters. So they come from south, uh, south, uh, blah, 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 blah. they come from southern Texas and northern Mexico, down like southwestern Texas area. They're usually found in kind of rockier, dry, gravel riverbed areas. Um, and these guys are super awesome. Actually, these guys are like a super, super big draw for like lifetime herpers and people like that, where people will just go like her herping is going out specifically looking for uh, herp tiles. So rep uh, amphibians, snakes, even uh, in insects and things like that. Uh, and it's a huge draw down in southwestern Texas, for the most part, looking for little guys like this, as well as rattlesnakes and stuff like that. These guys are super, super cool because as far as king snakes go, they're one of the most docile and most handleable king snakes. Not to say that king snakes aren't, but a lot of them have that really, really high prey drive where sometimes you'll get them, you know, flying out of the enclosure or just kind of hanging out. They'll just kind of decide, oh, this looks kind of tasty and maybe take a little chomp to see if you're food. These guys very rarely do that. And I wish that I had a larger specimen for you. I only have just this one guy. We picked up Nez Pierce from the Arlington show uh, back in um, February of 2020, uh, before everything went down in 2020, obviously, uh, because hopefully we're going to do a breeding loan. But as since the person who uh, had the females kind of kind of dropped off the face of the earth, so we're eventually going to be looking for another one of these things. What's another really cool thing about these guys? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about them specifically is that they don't get very large. Like they, I think the world record for one of these things was about 57 inches, which is a behemoth, a monster of a snake. They usually only get between like 24 and 36 inches. So two, three feet is very, is the most common. Occasionally they'll get them up to four. So that thing was a monster. But so these guys don't really need a large enclosure. So, you know, if you don't have a whole lot of them, um, you can keep them in a 10 gallon tank or a smaller, rack system if you're you know planning on breeding or have quite a few animals so these guys are super awesome they're north american desert colubrids so they don't need a whole lot of humidity but they still need some so still a water dish still a humid hide you know uh, a realistic one or something tougher with like damp paper towels or sphagnum moss or something like that um, you can keep them on a variety of different beddings like i said you don't need a whole whole lot of humidity so something drier so if you're gonna do coconut or cypress, you know, make sure it's pretty dry, but something like aspen bedding or something like that is perfect for these guys. Another super, super cool thing about these guys is the fact that they're incredibly variable. And that is actually one of the reasons why they're so sought after in the hobby. These things used to be very inexpensive, you know, probably back in like 2002, 2004-ish area. You could pick these guys up for under $50. Now it's hard to find them under 200. Uh, just because I think the Kluber market in general has kind of exploded, but also people have realized how incredibly cool these things are. So these guys, they do have a couple actual color morphs. Like there is a leucistic one, and I think there is a T-positive one, and there may or may not be some uh, albino, like T true T-negative albino, or maybe those are crosses, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure there are leucistics, which are completely true alterna, as well as the T-positive. But these guys are very variable just in their natural colorations depending on where they are. So this phase, or the alterna phase, which is kind of a more classical look, have that thick red and gray banding with kind of that black in between, but they are very diverse. There can be some where they have very thin, very small amounts of red where it's very thin and they're more gray. There are some where there's no red at all, where they're just a solid gray snake with the black striping. There's some where there's, you can see there's a little bit of white that comes up from their bellies up into their dorsal, where it's all gray, black, and white, where the reds are different. Like I even saw one where the back was almost completely fully red striped and then the sides and belly were gray and black, which was absolutely crazy. 
Anyway, these guys are absolutely amazing. I love Alterna, Gray Band and King Snakes. They're super cool, super docile. They are amazing little calm collected colubrids. Like a lot of people who like who prefer pythons and boas over colubrids because you know colubrids as, as a whole kind of cruise and move a whole lot more because just just that's the type of animals that they are. These guys don't really move a whole lot. Yeah, they move a lot. They're, they seem a little bit more kind of like cool and calculated with their movements. They're not as quick moving as like a California king snake or a corn snake or a Florida or something like that. So. I think these guys are amazing pets. They can be kind of hard to come by depending on the time of year or where you are in the United States. Like if you're in further down the south, like towards Texas, New Mexico area, they seem to be a little bit more abundant. I don't know if that's because people are like wild collecting them and stuff, which actually has to do a little bit more with their, uh, with that locality thing. The localities of these things get so specific that it's almost insane. So, you know, for like carpet pythons, there are specific localities or lines or with uh, bull snakes, there are some that are in different counties and areas like a Texas locality, Minnesota, uh, a Kings County, something like that. These guys get super specific to where there's even highway, like a highway 277 locality gray banded king snake or mile marker X or whatever number locality king snakes. They get that specific because these guys can be so variable and depending, even if it's just that you know, like square mile, they can be a little bit different just for whatever reason. A lot of the terrain and stuff down there is very similar, but just for whatever reason, even in these very small areas, they are so variable and seem to be even a little bit like population densities seem to have correlating things, even though the habitat, terrain, whatever it is, isn't really that fragmented or different. It's just really cool, just a, a cool little thing about specifically this type of snake, which is just a whole crazy thing because king snakes in general are just so variable in and of themselves, let alone all the different species, Cali's, deserts, speckles, Florida's, gray bands. It's crazy how many there are. And I think we're actually gonna do at some point a video about just not all of them because A, I don't have that many and B, there's just too many really to list and you know, under a half an hour long thing, you can just sit there and talk and talk more than just showing pictures of them. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video about gray band and king snakes. I love them to death. I think they're super cool. If you guys have any questions about gray bands, let me know down in the comments and I'll check you next time.